Hey, what up, y'all? Tonight we're going to be installing a motor into the SCX24. Uh, this morning I went out to uh, take a little stroll around the track um, and I pulled the trigger and no go. Still have steering, so I'm assuming that the motor just crapped out. Um, a lot of people complain about it. I had mine for four, five, six months, I don't know, some, somewhere like that. Um, and, and well, apparently crapped out, gave up the ghost, went up to RC Heaven. So uh, I'm going to put in a new one. It's a, a brushed motor. Uh, the name of the motor is Ox. Bought it off of eBay. Um, I've heard mixed reviews. Most of them are pretty good. Um, so let's throw it in there and see how it performs. Okay, tools that are needed. Going to be a 1.3 millimeter. 1.5 millimeter and a 4.0 box okay so I took off the body obviously batteries disconnected off um, what you're gonna have to do first what I'm doing first is uh, remove the ESC tray so I took off both shocks okay you have one on each side and there's going to be a screw holding the ESC cover down to the um, chassis. Okay, there's one on each side. Go ahead and get rid of those guys. And then this whole cover pops off and get it out of the way. Next step, we're going to go ahead and take off this cover here. So it looks like it's going to be one screw here. And then... one screw down a little bit further and now you'll see this cover starting to loosen up so we're going to go ahead and just follow that out there it goes move that to the side pull this screw out here there we go okay now what it appears to me is there's two screws holding this motor in okay one here and then one kind of behind this um, spur gear so in order to gain access to that we're going to have to take off this big gear here that's when you grab your 4.0 box <laughs> sorry i don't know and we're going to go ahead and take that off looks just like a uh, it's probably the same size as the wheel nuts. That's what it looks like. So that nut is out of here. Now this spur gear should just wiggle itself off a little bit. Try not to block the camera, but it's going to happen. Sorry. So you just grab a hold of that gear. Just gently slide it out. Oh, hey, look at that. All right. So what I have uncovered is the drive shaft has to come out also. So what we're going to do grab your 1.3 millimeter hex head and we're gonna spin out the nut or the screw I should say sorry for the drive shaft to pull that out of the way now your spur gear comes off now this one here has one side that's fatter than the other or has more of a collar on it sticking out that went facing inwards so I'm just gonna put it back that way because I want everything to operate correctly. Next, I'm gonna take off, there's two screws here. One on the bottom of the drive gear or the motor gear. I guess that would be your pinion. And then one on the top. And now you can see it's starting to free up. And now your motor comes out. So this is a stock one. And like I said, it crapped out on me. Now the motor that I got is the Ox motor, like I said already. Uh, this, this says 88T. I'm pretty sure T stands for turn. Like I said, I've been doing this hobby for about 
two years, but I still, you know, I mean, you don't have to know every in and out of something in order to have fun with it. The way I understand it is turns have something to do with maybe the motor windings or something. I'll learn more about that as we go, but, you know, mainly I want a motor that works, and this one doesn't anymore, so I'm going to take that out and get the other one ready. So now this particular motor did not come with a pinion gear on there already. Um, I didn't count the teeth on this one, but I just I transferred it over from the stock motor. Okay, so I just dug um, a screwdriver into there and just it's just pressed on, and I made sure the new one went on about the same distance as the one that I took off. So now we're just going to go ahead and reinstall it. So with this motor here, the bolt pattern is the same. Um, as the original plate, so that's not an issue at all. So you just take your um, screws that are the 1.5 millimeter, and you just use the pre-existing uh, holes that were already there. I usually just start on something like this. I'm just going to start one of the screws and not crank it down. Now there's one at the bottom here, and I'm going to get that one started too. And I don't really think you have to go crazy tight on any of this stuff here because it's so small. Um, I don't know. It's not like a full-size car or anything. I'm definitely going to go tight. I don't want it to fall apart while I'm cruising, but I don't need to really wrench on it. So if you have Popeye forearms, you know, take it easy, man. You know, you ain't got to break it. You ain't got to uh, hold the whole thing together with just those tiny little screws. All right, so next, the motor's back in. Um, it appears to be in a good spot. It's not hitting anything, so the wire orientation seems to be fine. So next, we're going to go ahead and put this uh, pinion back on, and I'm going to keep it the same way that I took it out. And just kind of get it in there gently until you get it to where it lines up. Make sure it's all the way in. Then I'm going to grab that little nut. And we're going to go ahead and start that. I'm just going to go on by, um, you know, finger at first. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the wrench. And then gently hold your uh, pinion gear while you tighten it down. Once again, I think everything needs to be free flowing. You don't want it to be crazy. Now we have to put the drive shaft back on. So this has a little like half notch, um, you know, it's like a half moon shape thing. So you can see that there. That has to match up correctly onto the uh, output shaft from your transmission or whatnot. So, and you also want to keep in mind the direction of your drive shafts. Uh, the way I understand it is it is called phasing your drive shafts. You want them to be phased correctly. And what that means is that U joint um, is going to be the same on the front of the drive shaft as the rear of the drive shaft. So everything kind of lines up and operates and pivots correctly. So once you get that where it needs to be, I'm going to rotate the sh shaft a little bit until I get it to a spot that I need it to be. Okay, once you get your drive shaft in the right spot, go ahead and screw that in. Now we have to um, put the cover back on here, which is just your two screws on the back side. Should line up pretty easy. Just start the one and grab a hold of your other screw and get that down a little bit further here. Get that started. Okay, after those two are in.
Okay, now I'm going to put the ESC um, case or stand, whatever, back on. Kind of fits in these little channels on either side of the chassis. I'll just make sure both sides are in. Which they are. Okay, that's good. Right, so you're going to have one tiny one towards the front of the ESC tray. Once you get your holes lined up, it'll go in nice and easy. When you have one on the other side, right behind this wheel here, this guy here. So you're going to go ahead and get that one lined up, and it should start for you. Okay. Those are both in and tight. And then the final step is to, I did this rubber band thing here as kind of a limiting strap. Um, I run this thing with no um, shocks, or no springs on my shocks, I should say. And it's, seems to be a little bit better with a limiting strap yes it's I don't know it's a debate that I see on Facebook all the time about no springs and yada 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 if you're any kind of competition build you're gonna have springs on there and only blah blah double barrel yakety schmackety whatever just run whatever you run and if it doesn't do what you want it to do then change it you know uh, but this works for what I do, and if I don't think it's going to work for me, then I'll change it, and I'll put some springs on it or whatever. But point being is, with no springs, this, and it's not necessarily no springs, I guess, but just the position I run these in, a strap to help kind of keep everything in place works for me. So if I'm running on a steep incline, the body will have a tendency to, you know, pull off and kind of, you know, come up higher than what you want it to. Where if you have a strap to kind of hold it down, you can still climb and everything kind of stays, you know, somewhat tucked in and neat. So that's the whole point of the limiting strap. All right, got the shocks back on. Got that little limiting strap thing going on. And then... Now we just had to plug this back into the motor slot, which should be the white one, and if not, oh boy, okay, well, that's what we're going with. Now we just got to add some power to it and make sure it turns on, and if it drives, then this was a successful mission. All right, fellas. It's like pouring out there and stuff. We're getting the uh, beginning of a weird storm in the middle of winter, so, you know, bear with me here. And I'm going to double check this. I think underneath this here Velcro that I love so much is what is what. So before I blow anything up, hey, I guessed right. All right. So motor goes there. I'm going to put my battery in here make sure that's pushed down all the way I'm going to turn on the remote turn on this thing here all right it's definitely strong it sounds pretty quiet actually so that's cool I like that and we'll put the body on and give her a little rip. Mm -hmm.